Hello! How are we all doing today? My name is Anima and I have yet another Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle for you, this time against David. Now this is an OU tier match. It's a passers by special, but it was actually a pretty good one, and it is kind of my most reliable way of obtaining OU at the moment. So, without further ado, let's hit battle start and see what everybody's brought to the table. So David is issuing a challenge and decides to lead with his Hitmonlee! Um, anticipating this, I decided to lead with Agra. I would have liked to bait my opponent to going for their um, normal gem boosted fake out to try and get their unburdened to go off early so as to not get potentially swept by this thing later on. But alas, they do not fall for the trick and wisely go out into the Rotom, who can take this brave bird like a champ. I have not revealed that I am scarfed as of yet. My opponent doesn't have a proper gauge on my speed. Um, but it is nice to be able to get off a juicy, juicy, juicy 40% on that Rotom because those things are bastards. I don't care who you are, where you come from, that thing is a bastard. It's not a Pokemon, it's a goddamn washing machine. Anyway, um, Bubbles is going to get burnt by a Will-O-Wisp, which is a very good move on my opponent's behalf. I've done um, a number onto my aggro and get some residual damage on my Bubbles. So, anticipating the outswitch, but not knowing exactly what would happen, I did go for the Yawn, and I do catch the Charizard, which is really nice! Um, I don't actually have a water move on Bubbles, which is precisely why Yawn would have been the better play anyway. Um, but my opponent doesn't know that, and so switches out into Crobat. Now, I'd have loved to stay in and go for an Ice Beam, but I didn't want to um, contest with the potential that my opponent would have wanted to chance to sleep and go for a Solar Beam. I really didn't want that to happen, so I went out into Aggro, who can handle this thing just fine. Psych! I went for a U-turn instead of a Brave Bird, so I have definitely revealed I'm scarfed because Crobat is fast as fuck and just would easily outspeed my bird regardless. So my safe switch in is um, Fender, my Sand Slash, who can take this cross poison and go to the bank and, you know, just kind of have a field day with it. Which is very, very nice for me. Gonna get some lefties recovery as my opponent goes for the U-turn. This is the prime opportunity to set up my Stealth Rocks and start punishing these switches because, Jesus Christ, it just... It just keeps happening. So my opponent goes out into the Azumarill and this is honestly just a tragedy for everybody involved. And... <laughs> I don't know precisely why I felt so strongly about this, but I looked at it and I just kind of thought that it had a citrus. I just kind of knew that it would be like a like a belly drumming set, so I just went straight for the knockoff, which could have potentially been really not good at all. <laughs> um, but my opponent did in fact go for the belly drum, so this is very, very, very nice. I know they're going to want to get max damage off on me, so I think they're probably going to go for some... They probably don't want a chance to switch out. Um, to go for the waterfall, um, just in case I went into Gastrodon and got the uh, Storm Drain. So my opponent did go for the superpower, and that is gonna take Fender out, sadly. But Fender, you definitely did your job taking that horrible fucking beastie down to red, which is so, so nice. I can't tell you how nice this is. Um, my opponent does withdraw the Azumarill, preserving it for death fodder later on, keeping it with a little sliver of health. The rocks would actually take it out, just so you know. Um, as I decide to go for a vacuum wave with my Diablo! And this does a very good amount to the Rotom at the current stage it's in. Um, I decide to go for an Aura Sphere just in case my opponent went for an out switch, hoping to preserve the Rotom as they did with the Azumarill. So I'm feeling pretty good. I'm doing kind of well here. Um, my opponent is free to go into the Hitmonlee though, and this thing is uh, its just scary. I did anticipate the um, normal gem, which is why I switched out into aggro. Now, for some inane reason, I didn't take, I forgot to take into account that the Unburdened would not would actually double its speed, not just apply a scarf. So the speed is doubled, which is which is precisely how it can just clean out speed aggro and kick my bird in the face. I have mixed feelings about this. I don't really like the whole kicking birds in the face thing. It's just, I don't know, it, I don't know, it's just not very sociable. I don't really understand it. So my opponent is free to go for another close combat. But I know that Garchomp can take at least one, which is precisely what happens. And I am free here to go for the Dual Chop. Get some karate movements on this thing. And the first hit of Dual Chop is actually enough to take out the Hitmonlee because of the defense drops from the close combats. Not that it particularly matters. But now this goddamn thing comes in. <laughs> and not wanting to take an Ice Beam, I did decide to switch out into my specially defensive Gastrodon. Now, um... I did have some kind of plan for manoeuvring around this creature. I did want to make it stay as an ice type and then get into my Lucario, but the reason why I didn't switch out into my Lucario despite understanding that it was going to go for the Ice Beam is because I wanted to preserve um, Diablo at good HP, but my opponent did score the crit with the Ice Beam, which is very tragic. And I think it mattered somewhat considering that Bubbles managed to live that. But 
Regardless, I'm able to die, um, which is always nice. <laughs> but the Grodendra is psychic type, so my vacuum waves will do absolutely nothing to it. So I have to go back with my original plan of making it become an ice type um, and going into Lucario. So I went into Garchomp just to bait the ice beam again, as they did in fact go for the ice beam and hit my Lucario in the face. My Lucario is going to be able to take that somewhat well considering how frail Lucario is. Now I thought my opponent would outswitch because they'd seen me use the vacuum wave before and I anticipated the Crabat coming in which is precisely why I went for the flash cannon. As you can see this isn't going to do as much as I would like. It actually comes just shy of taking it out. But the special defense does drop and considering that I probably should have stayed in and gone for the, um, for the vacuum wave. But I was really concerned that it wouldn't take it out because for those of you who don't know, um, the fighting type basically it's just quad resisted by this thing and I did not want a chance that there would be any possibility of it being able to be alive. So I went into Dame, <laughs> my poor, poor Houndoom who never gets a chance to do anything. <laughs> it's such a tragedy, she just comes out to die. But at least the recoil is enough to take out the Crobat. Um, now there was a 50-50 chance here basically. I thought to myself I could go into Garchomp or go into my Lucario. Ultimately, I decided to go into Lucario just in case the Greninja would come up because I knew that my Lucario would not be able to take another Ice Beam at the state I was at, whereas there was a chance that Garchomp would be able to live a potential, um, whereas I would have been able to switch from Lucario into Garchomp and potentially live something that the Charizard did, so yeah. Tragically for me, it is a Charizard X, but this does present itself its own kind of bonus because the Flare Blitz does enough when combined with the Rough Skin to put it in range for a Vacuum Wave to be able to take it out. So that's precisely what happens. I am able to chip away at that last little smidge of health and basically Priority and the Rocks are going to be enough to seal the deal on this game. So out comes the Greninja and it's not going to be able to take this vacuum wave, I'm gonna vacuum wave at it. I don't know how that works, but either way, I punched a frog in the face and it was fucking brilliant. Um, so I'm gonna lose some more HP to my life, I'll be calling the Azumarill's gonna come out, and as I told you, it died to the rocks. So this is absolutely superb, and I am able to claw my way to victory because of dear, dear sweet Diablo who managed to pull it out of the back with the vacuum waving. I would really like someone to explain to me how that works. So, um, Guys, I hope you enjoyed that battle as much as I did uh, recording it and playing it and so on and so forth. If you did enjoy that battle, if you feel so inclined, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment. Um, as always, you don't have to, but it is a matter of appreciation and it would put a smile on my face. So, more importantly than all of the above, I would like for you all to take care of yourselves and I will see you soon. Bye-bye!